Speaker is Michael Lechin. Take that down. Michael Lechin of Nexenta. Uh, Michael, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Sure, thanks. So <clears throat> the guys did a great job of getting down into when you're looking specifically at a disk, you're looking at a hardware le level. But how many out there say the first thing you look at, you get a phone call from somebody that says, I need to look at what exactly that disk is doing because I have to deploy an email infrastructure and I need to know what disk you're using. Because if you're not using Seagate, I care. If you're not using Toshiba, I care. Nobody cares. What it comes down to is what's the application doing? So when we're looking at latest generation storage solutions, the key is what can applications provide and how can you create an application-centric storage solution that takes software-defined storage to a next level. That level that allows you to automate things and look at what you need from the package. Applications are that driving force behind the data center today. So just looking at high availability of resources, when you're looking at almost 60% of the needs from CIOs around the globe said that the first thing they care about is that high availability. Disaster recovery for the entire data center, but primarily down again to what the application is. So we start caring about what that application is, what's happening with your data, how you can use it. So how do we blend that into how does storage gonna work? There's a lot of people that care about the app. When we go through the flow though, if you walk to a CIO, a CTO, they don't care about what the infrastructure is. They want simpler is better, the easiest thing they can get. Don't make me spend a lot of money. I'm not in the hardware business. I don't want to deal with buying hardware, dealing with hardware. Tell me what I can do to give the business value of what I can get, what I really need for the application. And then the speeds and feeds, they don't care. So as much as we sit up here and a lot of us have to deal with those day in and out, what that matters. The CIO, the CTO doesn't care how much IO you're getting in and out of this drive or what the latency is. That's not what matters to them. They care what that business value is. But then you get down to the app owner. Maybe it's that SQL DBA or it's the guy that said, I just developed this application that I'm put out in the cloud and I'm trying to deliver this, this gaming system. So out there, they, they're the ones that come in and say, I don't really care. All I want is availability, availability. I want my stuff to work. And by the way, more availability. That's really what they care about is how much can I keep my, my stuff. That, otherwise, they could care less what you're putting behind it. You get this, the, kind of the last line of it. The vendor says this will work great, but I don't know if I really trust it. And I, I, I want to go with what I've known for years. So it's how do you transition people away from, this is what I've known for years, into what an application is going to do. And then into the guys that have to deal with those speeds and feeds. They're the next one that have to deal with that application. And they're going to say, a lot of times at this point, it's not where am I going to put. They already know by default it's going to go in some sort of virtualized infrastructure. It's not going to go onto a physical box. Maybe it's going into virtual server farm they have in-house. Maybe it's going into something in the cloud. It doesn't really matter, but they know it's not going to go on standalone stuff. And that every different vendor that comes in with a new brand of storage, they won't be able to manage that across the board for the application. They don't want to manage it for the I.O. either. Most of the guys are at this point are looking and going, it's great, I, I really don't care what this, this drive does. Let me know how it's gonna impact this application and I can move from there. Even down to the level of that IT administrator sitting at the data center. Each application, though, really has a significant impact on how you're going to deal with it, how you're going to deal with the storage. Whether it's you're looking at read or write impact, obviously if you're in a VDI environment, it's going to be a lot heavier write type environment. If you're looking at something that's more distributed, the gaming systems, the things that you look at something like the object store for, a lot of those, you're trying to get it out to more people. It's a lot of read. It's how much can I pull off of there. It really depends on what the application is, and that's not what everything is built for right now. Maybe you're looking to be able to have all of those in a single solution. You don't want to have those multiple different storage solutions. You want to have something that you can say, I'm managing this environment for this, this application here, this application here. Then when you get into DR, how does that get impacted by the application? Well, maybe I care about the email data. I want to make sure it's good for DR. I've got to make sure I can have the replication there. But some of the file data, it doesn't need the return time. Realistically, if I'm in the factory, there I was talking about, in in all reality, if I get have a factory that hits by a hurricane, factory goes away. Do I care whether the people that can't build my physical pieces can get to their data? The factory is not there. <laughs> if I can't build the piece, I could care less. It doesn't matter. It's what's the purpose of it? What's the application? And then really, how does that user get impacted by the storage? When you're looking at things like IO spikes and latency, how does that ebb and flow really impact them? So how do we correct that? 
really when you're looking at that user experience, latency comes into play dramatically. Just looking at this, if you look at on the far side, that's that spiking issue you get right away. As soon as you start to look at something, if you can smooth that flow by getting your storage closer to your application, you no longer have that big latency spike. You can go well into the cycle of really hammering away at a system and smooth what you're looking at. It doesn't have that impact of I can't get to my data or it's not quick enough. Things like that, improving the latency along the way. Also drops that CPU cycle down. So you're getting better efficiency of your gear and a better user reaction all at the same time. Really what it leads to is that general purpose storage that everybody's been buying for years is dead. There's no reason that anyone needs to buy that big block, I'm gonna do everything storage anymore. Because it's not what is going to help the end user get the reaction. I mean, no, people don't get a phone call from their SAN saying I'm not working right. They get a phone call from the person who's sitting in front of a desk and says this isn't right, I need you to fix this. That's what it has to work, is the application needs to be there. And each one has their own custom requirements. Whether it is the email, whether it is the, the gaming system, whatever it is, each one is different. And storage guys have been building them for years, custom, each time. We need to find a way to get to a point where we can grow that solution without being custom every time. The back end can be the same. We know that section already. Whether it's object, whether it's POSIX, it doesn't matter. We know that section coming up. It really has to change with the application load. That's where some of the cloud things come into play. How can I scale it up? How can I add more components to it as I go? And then build into things like that virtualization first mentality. So if you're already driving your storage in that virtualization mentality, it's very easy to drive the application there as well. So how do we get there? Walking through how you can get to from what we have today into a solution that gives you truly application-driven software-defined storage, the first thing you need to look at is what does that application need? So step one, no matter who it is, is gonna be what is your application? What are you trying to do? What is the application requesting of the storage? What's it requesting to get back to the users? If it's email, or am I looking at how many users it is, how, much the mail, how many mailboxes there are, those type things. If it's a VDI environment, how many desktops do I need? It could be anything from within the enterprise or even out publicly. How many users are coming in to access my gaming system? From there, we already have the virtualization set in mind. Look at what we have with that hypervisor analysis. Should we be using VMware for this? Should we be using KVM? What are we going to use? How are we going to develop this? And once we have that solution for the virtualization in place, how much of it do I have for resources? CPU, memory, things like that. How do I take now those application questionnaire requirements, turn them into how much do I have currently so that I can compare them. Now I start to be able to provision storage off of those resources I have. So I've got the hypervisor that already sees the storage. Now let's grab that and present it back out as we need. That's where things like virtual storage appliance come into play. I can separate out the need for the storage from the hypervisor and give it back to the application. That's where you're starting to provision that storage specifically as it was required. So if I knew it was that VDI environment, and I did the questionnaire I asked, I knew I had a thousand users that had such a high write ratio, well now my storage then provision back gives better write response. If it's for that gaming system, well I just need to make sure they can read it more frequently. I don't really care about the write, it's not as, not as big of a deal. When you're looking at something like that VSA-based design, there's a lot of different advantages you can get out of it. It can definitely drop your cost. That cost per user, cost per mailbox, whatever that is, can drop dramatically because now, instead of having a big block of storage that I may only get 60, 70% efficiency out of, I can start taking pieces of that and I know the storage for this application was custom designed for it and I can get the right usage and the right storage in place. When I'm looking at higher I.O., lower I.O., whatever it is, read or write, I can set that, like we talked about in the read or write. And then the burst isolation is where I was talking about the latency. Now, I have an application coming off of a virtual environment, and instead of having to go across any sort of network, any sort of SAN, it's right there local to it. I can start using caching right near where I'm at and being able to smooth that ratio out so that user experience is better. And then making that uniform. Because it's all local, not only do you get that smoothness, but you get uniform I.O. because you know you're coming out of memory, you're coming out of cache. More and more comes out of the stuff that you need local, the stuff that's quick. 
And then, of course, for better write if that comes into play. You get that capability. If I'm trying to write to something further away, it's going to take longer. Write local so that you know it hits and comes in quicker. Now, how do we need to present it out? That gets into that application presentation. Now, is it a POSIX system? Are you going over file? Are you going over block? Are you presenting it out as object to something else? It doesn't matter how you're presenting it out because you've got that same baseline. I have a footprint to use of here's my storage. It's coming off of this virtual environment, and it's a baseline. Now I can put the application on top of it in the presentation. From there, you can actually look at what it is, determine the benchmarks, change it if you want. So it really starts making a change to the enterprise architecture. From in the data center, now I've got multiple storage vendors in the back end. Maybe I can look at the vendor that does a specific model. Maybe we know they, they have a great caching methodology. Maybe we know they've got a great tiering. They do better on writes than somebody else. Well, bring that in, and this other guy is fantastic on write. I bring that into the data center. Now, across the top of it, it doesn't matter what I'm using because I become storage agnostic, and I can grab pieces for each one. So I can grab a little bit of storage for the heavy write, a little bit for the heavy read, and present them both out to the application. By doing that, it drops my cost of not buying these huge, massive systems. The massively just ridiculous systems that say, I need to throw all these disks at to make this work. Well, no, I need this section of disk, I need this section of disk. Put them together, give me what I need. Drops your cost, allows you per application to be a lot less expensive. And sometimes you can reutilize some of that equipment that may be getting aging. Maybe you don't need it as much right now, but if you put something in front of that and using that caching local, you get more use out of your existing hardware. So that's where you can take current storage, things you have, turn it into even better application-centric storage, and drive the next generation of software-defined storage. Thanks.